Now, coming in at number five on my top 10 uh, gym mistakes is overpronation. So what is overpronation? Well, pronation means to rotate towards the middle or downwards. So for instance, to pronate your hand, you would turn your palm to face the ground. Other parts of the body can pronate and supinate too. So supinate is the opposite. So that would be turning your palm to face up like a holding, holding a bowl of soup. That would be to supinate. But what I see in the gym is over pronation of the lower limbs, the legs, the feet, the ankles. So over pronation, if not corrected soon enough, can lead to numerous lower limb injuries including hallux valgus, which is when your big toe bends inwards towards the middle of the foot, bunions, which are normally coupled with uh, hallux valgus, Achilles tendinosis, ankle sprains, plantar fasciitis, anterior compartment syndrome, shin splints, medial cartilage damage, ACL tears, medial collateral ligament tears, chondromalacia patella, jumper's knee, osteoarthritis, quadriceps tendinosis, stress fractures to the femur, and piriformis syndrome. So it's not a dysfunction that you want to be taking lightly. Okay, it's, it's something that you, like the others that I've mentioned, you know, you really want to be preventing these. A, for injury prevention, but also for, uh, for performance. So I often see overpronation in walking, running, stepping, lunging, and squatting, and sometimes, although less so, even in deadlifting. And remember, when you're deadlifting, you're generally using a very heavy weight. To explain the concept further, let's look at gait, which is the term used to describe walking, running, and sprinting. So when walking and running, there are two distinct phases of gait. You have the stance phase, and you have the swing phase. So the stance phase is when the foot is in contact with the ground and the swing phase is when the leg is off the ground and it normally swings uh, from the back to the front position. The stance phase also has three distinct phases, although there are different explanations of different uh, numbers of phases, but I'm gonna to stick to the three just to make it simple. You have the heel strike, you have the mid stance phase and you have the toe off phase, which are pretty self-explanatory. I'm sure I don't need to explain those in any more detail. So let me give you a working example here. Imagine you're walking and as your foot hits the ground, which we call heel strike, you should ideally land on the outside of the heel. As you take your full body weight on that foot, moving towards the mid stance phase, your standing leg begins to roll inward or pronate under the load of gravity and your body weight, and then begins to supinate the foot prior to toe off. That leg after toe off then goes through the swing phase and the process continues. That's what we call gait. However, if you have over pronation, your foot lands on the outside of the heel, and as you go through the stance phase of gait, the foot rolls inwards too much and too much weight is now on the medial side of the foot and not evenly distributed across the width of the foot. This places excess stress on the medial side of the entire lower limb. So why does this happen? So why, why does overpronation happen? Well, overpronation happens due to a combination of potential reasons. Another term that can be used to describe overpronation is what we call medial rotational instability. So medial means to rotate inwards. As we go through the swing phase of gait, the tibia and the femur, so the thigh bone and the shin bone, externally rotate to place the heel in the best position for heel strike. And the tibia and femur internally rotate during the stance phase and then externally rotate again uh, at the end of the stance phase to place the foot 
in the best position for toe off. Now, ultimately, overpronation is the inability to control the amount of pronation or internal rotation of that limb. So the question is, what controls the pronation? Well, there are a number of factors. So here I will introduce the role that the pelvis plays too, because it is important to understand. The pelvis can rotate anteriorly and posteriorly on either side and can move and normally do move independently of each other. At toe off, when the leg is behind, the same side of the pelvis is anteriorly rotated, which unlocks the sacroiliac joint, which is the joint between the pelvis and the sacrum. This allows the greatest amount of mobility, which is exactly what you need when propelling the body forwards at toe off. At mid stance, the pelvis should be in a neutral position and have the same amount of rotation on each side. And at heel strike, the pelvis, so when the foot is forward of the body, the pelvis on that side is posteriorly rotated, which locks the sacroiliac joint, creating optimum stability to absorb the weight of the body through that foot and ankle complex. Now, hopefully you're still with me. So why did I just tell you that? Well, as the pelvis goes into anterior rotation, it's coupled with internal rotation of the lower limb. When the pelvis goes into posterior rotation, it's coupled with external rotation of the limb. So to prevent overpronation, you need to have muscles strong enough to control anterior rotation of the pelvis and interior rotation of the limbs. So which muscles are involved in those tasks? I hear you ask. Well, the muscles that control anterior rotation of the pelvis are the lower abdominals along with the glutes and hamstrings. The muscles that help to control internal rotation of the femur are the small group of external rotators on the back of the hip and the posterior fibers of the glute uh, gluteus muscles. The biceps femoris muscles also help to control internal rotation of the tibia when the knee is flexed and the tibialis anterior helps to control the eversion or pronation of the foot and the ankle. What we must also take into account is the ankle is a slave to the hip, which means whatever happens at the hip will be directly uh, reflected at the ankle and the knee is a, uh, is a slave to the hip and the foot. So whatever happens at the foot and the hip will be translated to the knee. So the, so the main priority has to be to address the muscles at the hip and the pelvis to control pronation and medial rotation of the limb. So overpronation is something that I see every time I go to the gym and often see walking down the street. Again, most exercise professionals are not taught this in their training, so they don't know to look for it and they don't know how to correct it. So hopefully you're still with me so far. I hope you are, because what I'm going to do now is uh, give you some suggestions on how you can assess yourself or feel if you are uh, overpronating. And I'll also, well, it'll be a bit later on, I'll also give you exercise suggestions on to correct it. Thanks for watching the Radical Health Rebel YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to share with your friends and family or share via your social media. Hit the like button subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to receive notifications of new video clips from the podcast. And if you want to watch the full episode, completely ad free plus premium content and join the Radical Health Rebel Patreon community, head on over to the Radical Health Rebel Patreon channel at www.patreon.com forward slash Radical Health Rebel. Thanks again for watching.